Hello world, I'm Chris Perillo, and you're watching and or listening to another live edition of the Locker Gnome Daily Report, or TLDR for short, your daily dose of geek news, reviews, and answers that you can use like an answer to the question, uh, when are you going to do your iPad Air 2 review? Uh, I just recorded it today, live onto YouTube. Uh, the patrons were able to watch behind the scenes uh, with me babbling. My dad was also here in my workshop to uh, watch me do it. Uh, it will be edited and posted to the classic YouTube channel in about a week's time. That's how we're going to be doing things, in case you were wondering, or in case you just woke up, um, you know, and haven't been hearing the things that I've been saying for a while. We've got a bit of a juggling act going on between the Geek Lifestyles YouTube channel, which will continue forward, but uh, also the reboot of uh, the classic Locker Gnome slash Chris Perillo channel, which will now pretty much have edited fun videos, not just tech, but, uh, you know, just uh, anything that I find interesting and fascinating and fun and functional, and I want to talk about that day. It's not just tech for me. I, I, I like tech. But, you know, it's, it, I, I'm, a, I'm a curious sort, I believe. I like a lot of things. Which isn't a problem. I think we all like a lot of things. But uh, I can't just talk about one thing for the rest of my life. That I would be very, very bored with in about two weeks. That's, that's how long it would take for me to get bored with talking about just one thing. And I know it seems like I, I pull out the stick of truth uh, just about every day. And you can see that when uh, TLDR is put in uh, public, or made public, on YouTube. You may be listening to the podcast. Uh, you know We're streaming this live so the patrons, a.k.a. the Supernomies, get to watch it without ads ahead of time and get all sorts of other bonuses if you want to become one. Uh, so I did ask for questions, your questions, in relation to the iPad Air 2 review. And I got a little frustrated because I asked this a couple weeks ago, and apparently some people didn't like the fact that I asked the questions. So instead of getting a series of questions from people... What I got was a lot of uh, ungrateful comments. They were upset because they were expecting an iPad Air 2 review when the title clearly stated, because apparently reading comprehension is a problem in the world today where people don't even want to read a title. Too long, didn't read. Really? Come on, it's there. Black and white. What would you want to see in an iPad Air 2 review or something along those lines? Certainly not anything that would indicate that uh, that video itself was the iPad Air 2 review. I, I really wanted your feedback. Well, I you know, ended up you know, culling through every question that was submitted, and I did find some, thank God, in the Facebook thread. Some people were actually paying attention instead of just listening to the voice inside their head, and they, they you know, had good questions. So uh, the iPad Air 2 review is pretty much based on the questions that you were asking. And so if anybody has any complaints, they have nobody to complain to apart from themselves because I gave everybody an option to influence that review that uh, I just recorded uh, today. Today of all days, Cheese Lover's Day. Did you know that? Oh, I'm so grateful for Cheese Lover's Day. Grateful. Great. You know, cheese great. Did you see the cheese grater that's in the shape of an electric guitar? Isn't that awesome? Did you see the cheese wedge doorstop? That was pretty cool, too. I love cheese. I love cheese. And, oh, this is perfect. I'm lo I went out looking for this today. Uh, we're recording today, uh, by the way, Vlog 1000. That'll be going into the new Perillo Vlogs channel, a dedicated Perillo Vlogs channel. I know, I know, it took me long enough. Uh, apparently... Kraft has uh, started to do Star Wars-themed macaroni and cheese, and there's one with Darth Vader on it. So I went out looking for it. Couldn't find it. So new, I can't even get one. So if you find the mac and cheese, Darth Vader mac and cheese box out there, let me know. I, I Just do a hashtag Vader spotting. I gotta know. I, got, I gotta have... I hate mac and cheese. Ha. Long story of that. I think I've probably talked about it in the vlog before. Cheese Lover's Day. So we found all sorts of fun cheese things. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. NYOP Learn to Design 2.0 Bundle, that's a name your own price bundle, is now available on deals.lockernome.com. If you wanted to learn how to design, you're not much of a designer, you needed some starting points, now would be the time to pick it up. Save some money. On Live has over 250 games, one month access, free. Right now, you want to try it? Free. Hey, look, free. There you go, free. Don't sit there and say, or stand there, or lay there, or however you're taking in uh, what I'm laying down for you right now. This is what I'm laying down. It's free. One month free. You want to try one month free? Go to the link. Deals.lockernome.com for online. I'm sorry. Online. Yeah, duh. You have online. On live games access. We also have a 67% off subscription for a VPN service. Something that you might want to consider. 
Mm -hmm. uh, in the coming years, I think it's going to become increasingly important. I wish it was easier to use, but certainly easier to use than it used to be. Does it mean it's perfect? No, but it's possibly better than the alternative, and that is not having one at all. Where's my phone? It's in my pocket here. Had to take it off the desk because uh, I think during my iPad Air 2 review, it, the light was bouncing up into my face and uh, cast this weird bluish haze glow about me that doesn't naturally exist. I wanted to pull up the Ocho app. And I'm, I'm probably going to do a separate video about the Ocho app itself because I'm looking for your participation. This is, this is actually kind of neat. So they came to me with the idea of going to you and saying, hey, what if you posted this question right here? Come on, Chris, come in. I know I'm, I'm really white. There we go. I'm going to tilt it to the side. It's me saying, hey, uh, tell me what your top tech was for the year 2014. You hit the, see this little reply button? Right there. You tap the reply button, you leave a video comment eight seconds long, and it, it shows up as a video comment. And what's going to happen at the end of this month is I'm going to take uh, from all the people who've submitted uh, re replies using the hashtag top tech to that Osho video, and I'm going to try to compile a separate video. So you have a chance of being in a top tech of 2014 video. I'm giving everybody the option. It's really easy to do. It's free. Download the Osho app. So easy to do. I'll put a link for you in the description, or you can just go to the App Store, type in Ocho, O-C-H-O. I know, maybe it's the Spanish language that's throwing people off. That means eight. You have eight seconds to do a video. Kind of fun, kind of easy. I'd love to do more of that kind of thing. Wouldn't it be awesome if every day I could throw a question out there, some kind of question, like, uh, you know, I love the new Star Wars movie trailer. What'd you think? And then you recorded a response, and then we had a video, like, at the end of the week that you were in, that you were a part of, instead of just me... I was able to, to surface the stuff that you thought, too, in the video. Like, your good comment wouldn't get buried among a whole bunch of really nasty comments, which is usually what happens on the internet. So this is a starting point. I'd like to do more of it, but uh, it's, you got to do it. <laughs> I can't leave a video response for you. And the chances of you having a smartphone are, are pretty high, or, or, you know, even a, a tablet uh, to use uh, the Ocho app. Very, 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 very simple to do. Uh, next on my list of things is a laundry list of, uh, news from around the web that, uh, I've been collecting since, uh, before the weekend, since Friday was the AMA and yesterday was the open AMA thread, uh, answering people's questions as they were asking them. Microsoft is set to show off Windows 10 tomorrow, again, uh, not just the mobile platform, but I, I, I believe also, uh, giving some updates to, uh, the desktop platform. It's just going to be an update of sorts, to let the world know where Windows 10 is headed. Uh, so it's uh, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. I really would like to see a consumer preview edition of Windows 10 sooner rather than later. Right now my uh, my dad is here with, uh, with us, and I'd like to be able to sit him in front of a computer and have him use Windows 10 for the first time. A, a consumer preview edition, right? You know, what before? Because he did that with Windows 8, and look what happened. So uh, I'd like to see if Dad can uh, be willing to do the canary in the coal mine thing with Windows 10, but we will see because I, I don't I, I don't want to install Windows 10 yet until they've got the consumer preview edition. Then I know that's what they're thinking, where they want to head with it, and are possibly looking for feedback. So uh, yeah, expect some news uh, from Microsoft's camp uh, within the next day or so. That might be pretty exciting for you. But as uh, they said on GeekWire, it's something that I've said for really I would say an extended period of time. Uh, does the world need Windows? And, and they say this because I guess there's a place in Microsoft uh, where they, they say the world needs Windows. Well, well does the world need Windows? I, I think Windows needs the world more than the world needs Windows at that point. And unfortunately, unless Microsoft understands that, I think they're going to have a very difficult time in the marketplace. They're making certain decisions uh, that I think are, are good decisions, as I had mentioned uh, yesterday, in relation to the software, the service, the brand. But I don't know if they've gone far enough to really have people not just believe, but perceive and understand that Microsoft is relevant or could be relevant in their lives. And you're talking to people who might have an Android smartphone and an iPad or uh, an iPhone and an Android tablet, and, and they're not using the PC as much as they used to because they don't need to. You don't need a PC to check email. You don't need a PC to browse the web, and you don't need a PC to manage a lot of the stuff that can be done in an app on a smartphone or a tablet these days. The PC is great for what it is, and, and certainly for what it was. Remember, I grew up with Scooter Computer and Mr. Chips, but we don't live in that era anymore. We're, we're far removed from it, and if anything's going to keep the PC kicking, it's probably uh, the people who love the PC, and, and that's not necessarily Microsoft. 
I think uh, hardcore PC gamers are going to keep the PC alive. No doubt in my mind. You love gaming. You love uh, you love that. You're. I think the PC is going to stick around for you. Um, yeah, I, for video editors, you know, people who need serious software, I think uh, your, the desktop is and the laptop even is going to be around for the foreseeable future. But that is a uh, it's shrinking on an increasing basis. Um, you know, I, I think the, the the world does not need any one platform over another. It's nice to have competition. It's good to see Microsoft still, uh, you know, in the game. But uh, I don't know if I'd say that the world needs Windows as much as Microsoft needs the world to need Windows. And I, I just don't see anything that's really keeping people there. Not right now. Not right now. Um, and I don't think Office is it. I don't think the Xbox is necessarily it. I, I think the gaming platform in general might be it, but again, that, that, that falls into the camp of PC gamers. And uh, so it's... it's uh, does, does Windows want to be known as the, the gaming platform? That's a possibility, you know? I wouldn't think that would be a bad thing. In fact, if I was... And I'm not Microsoft, and this is a bold... Uh, uh, it's not a rumor. This is not based on any intelligence, obviously, because I'm saying it. Wouldn't it be fascinating if... Microsoft, understanding full well how passionate PC gamers are, I mean, people love the PC, they call themselves, I, I hate, I hate calling them by their label because I just don't like its connotation, but they call themselves, for some god unknown reason, this awful, awful, awful thing. It's a great idea to belong to a group of people, but calling yourself anything like a master race is absolutely horrific. <laughs> it's horrific. It's a horrific label. You're good people. PC Master Race is a horrible label for good people, for a great idea. Uh, the, uh, because, come on. Just, I think they could have come up with something better. I don't know, maybe that's the humor in it. Maybe it's lost in me. Wouldn't it be fantastic if Microsoft doubled down and released uh, a version of Windows, maybe, maybe not 10, maybe 11 or 12 or 47 or whatever, that was specifically designed for games? Windows for games. Window Gamer Edition, Windows Xbox Edition, Xbox, Windows, whatever the hell they want to call it. Wouldn't that be neat? Because then, uh, the way that version of Windows shipped would be optimized specifically for that use case. Uh, stripping away any extraneous services, which back in the day you had to do regularly. You know, clearing out the RAM, the, the, the background processes. There were tips and tricks that uh, you had to go through to optimize your gameplay. Well, what if Microsoft did that for you? I mean, specifically with a games edition outright. I think that would sell like hotcakes. Man, I tell you what. Microsoft, I hope you take that idea. I'm sure you've come up with that idea, and I'm not the first person to say something like that. But I think it would be pretty uh, pretty amazing for them to do that. And I think a lot of PC gamers would be very, very happy with it. Me, I'm just a casual gamer, a classic gamer. I like I retro games. I get, is that what it is? That's my label? I'm a retro gamer? I'm happy to be a retro gamer. I got no problem with that. I like newer games. If they're reminding me of retro games like Crossy Road, that's a classic too. Uh, next on my list here, draw your own levels. Oh, speaking of games, in Adventure Time Game Wizard, and Weird Al Yankovic voices a character called Doodle Wizard. So if you watch Adventure Time, I do not. I tried to get into it, and maybe I haven't seen the right episode. I've seen one or two, and I, I, I get it, and I'm like, okay, this is this is interesting, but... I'm not really attaching myself to Adventure Time. Maybe Jedi will get into Adventure Time at some point. I, I don't know. Hun? Yeah. Do you have Jedi? Yeah, okay. Because I thought she could show off her outfit of the day. Yeah. You gotta see this. I mean, hopefully you will. It'll be in the uh, vlog number 1000 in the new uh, Perillo Vlogs channel. Uh, so you can uh, design your own adventure in this game. It's five bucks. Uh, really, really cheap. Uh, really affordable. If anybody bucked, it's five dollars. Oh my god. Are you kidding me? Like, you, you spent more money on a meal. Like, a meal with a crappy hamburger and a, 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 a jar of soda that, you know, is not doing you any favors. So don't get me you know, started on the value of an app, because trust me, a $5 app is cheap. You gotta remember, man, I grew up with, like, uh, software that you had to buy off the shelf. You didn't know how well it worked, and it cost you 50 bucks to find out. So a $5 app, when you know it's good, and you love the brand, pff, no problems there. So uh, it's neat because you can draw your own levels and then take a picture and then it'll actually create that level in the game. Kind of neat. And plus, you know, Weird Al Yankovic uh, voices a character. I don't know if I'm necessarily going to buy it because I'm not an Adventure Time fan. Uh, I, I, I don't know if I even like Adventure Time. I get 
that it exists and that I should like it, but I haven't found the episode that really hooks me. Not yet. Maybe I just got to sit down and binge until I like until I like it. And now, speaking of Weird Al Yankovic, very, very happy to see uh, that he announced his uh, mandatory world tour beginning May 12th. She okay? Boo? She, oh, she's, she's been fussy today. I think she's going through a growing spurt. And she may be teething. If she's like really, really super advanced for a kid, I think she's more like a six-month-old than a four-month-old. You okay, baby? You okay, sweetheart? Boop, boop, boop. Oh, sees daddy and lights right up. Her vodder. I am her vodder. So, uh, yeah, uh, it was really nice to see Weird Al announce this the way he did. Then last night, I saw a post on Facebook and I, Weird Al does not need my sympathy. He does not need my support in any way, apart from, you know, being a fan. I'm sure he appreciates that. But I felt so, not bad, but I just felt, I get it. I just, I got it. I understood. He's living life so transparently, and he's in control of his, his media and his social media. And he posted on Facebook. He said, hey, 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 thank you for, you know, saying that you were grateful that I, I am coming to your town and sorry if I'm not coming to your town. And he, he explained it. I'm paraphrasing here. But in such a way that people who were commenting on the thread, I think he took he took to heart and he should have because there are a lot of fans out there and some people were happy and some people were disappointed. And he doesn't want to disappoint anybody. But no, I don't want to disappoint anybody. But I thought it was a bold move and a smart move for him to come out and be transparent and explain, look, here's what I did. I said, this is what I could do. And then he, I guess he had to go to concert promoters and then they did the legwork and then made all the connections happen. It takes more than one person to do anything. And certainly Weird Al is more than one person as a band uh, and needs that support staff and that, that team. And they've done a fantastic job in the past. But I thought, I, I felt for him because it was like, really? Even he has to deal with this kind of crap? I mean, there's times that I feel like, look, people, I don't want to beat a dead horse. I can't keep doing this. I can't. I don't want to talk about the same thing. Because then it comes across very, almost too real, almost too transparent. Uh, you know, Weird Al is not larger than life. He's a human being. I think he's insanely talented. One of the most talented musicians I've ever had uh, the pleasure of listening to and supporting most of my life. Uh, but he's just as human. And I, I, I think some people just didn't quite understand how the business worked. And I run into that a lot. A lot of people don't understand how the uh, how the business, quote-unquote, works. And when I do a video on YouTube, um, you know, people assume, you know, oh, well, this website says you're worth this much, and this is how much this is worth, and that, that's how much this is worth. I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, A, that's not public record. Uh, B, that's not anywhere near the truth. And C, you just don't understand how it works. There was a, a video that I got tagged on, on on Facebook. Facebook's got this problem now where anybody can upload a video to Facebook. That's great. But the problem is, if you were getting paid for that video, unless you were running a sponsored ad in the video itself, if you were getting paid on ad views and, and, and page impressions, you would get nothing. And Facebook, right now, can have a video accrue millions of views that the person who produced the video would never be compensated for, even though ads ran on that page, even though I got shared. Facebook, I think, is going to really hurt your favorite video producers because of the fact that anybody can take a video, upload it, and reshare it as their own and never give credit. And, and that producer would never get a cent for all the work that they put into it. Why do you think I'm going... Yeah, I try to pursue sponsor models. Why do you think I'm going and, and creating YouTuber events for you to attend? Why do you think I'm very happy to have the Supernomies, a.k.a. the patrons? They allow me to be able to look past these problems that other producers have, that I've had. I mean, don't get me wrong. I would love... <laughs> I'd love to have the problem of a popular video being uploaded without my permission. I don't have that problem. Uh, a, because I've got patrons, uh, and B, because I'm trying to move my business model past the ad uh, revenue model. And this is what a lot of people don't understand. Some people just don't understand how every aspect of business works. And this is a challenge if you interact with them on a regular basis. Uh, this is, uh, it's difficult. And so I understood when Weird Al, Al, Mr. Yankovic, uh, posted what he posted. Uh, he was very transparent, and I, I applaud him for that. But I felt, I really felt like, oh, man, why did you, I mean... Why did he need to do this? And I knew he needed to do it, but I just felt bad. Like, really, people? Really? I don't know. You, you never... I mean, I want to... He, Like I said, he doesn't need my support any more than he's, he's had it, but uh, I just... I felt for him because he, he's so transparent. You can now play Zork on Twitter. 
Do you like uh, text-based adventures? I used to love those games. Used to love them. Didn't play them a ton, but I liked them. I, I well enough that I, I I remember playing them. I could never win. It's like the choose your own adventure. I would never I would never be able to successfully map out a, a, a successful adventure. But you can play it on Twitter if you follow Zork Play. Their first and only tweet basically kicks off the adventure. It's kind of neat how they made it work. I don't know how they did it, but it's pretty pretty cool. Also pretty cool, Emoji.ink. That's I-N-K. What you can do on Emoji.ink is use your web browser and draw in emoji. Let me see if this works on, uh, on the iPad here. Give me a second. Emoji. I hadn't tried it on the iPad. I tried it on my desktop web browser enough to... Oh... Server cannot... Do, oh, the, I typed it in wrong. I typed in I emoji. That doesn't exist. How about that? Emoji.ink. All right, we're going to wait for it to load any hour now. There we go. Okay, so it pulls up all the emoji in a very slow capacity. I am live streaming on the internet, so it's going to take a while. So now... Lo oh, yeah, so it does work on the iPad. That's kind of neat. You can And then you can change the emoji over here to another emoji. Let's go with frog. Or let's go to poo. Where's poo? Uh, oh, I just chose a disc. An old floppy disc. Well, that is kind of poo. Poo. Poo emoji. Oh, well, there you go. Emoji.ink. People have done some amazing artwork with it, too. Like, people who have far more talent than I could ever have. Uh, kind of neat. Emoji.ink. Link will be for you in the video description. Star Wars. I know. I've talked about it a lot today. I know. I know. Apparently... There's a man uh, who lives somewhere in this galaxy who was wearing a stormtrooper uniform and that saved him from being bitten by a snake. The armor that he was wearing uh, kept him protected. Star Wars saved a man's life. I'd say that's pretty amazing. This is a real story. Uh, another reason why I think uh, people who live in snake-infested territory should be wearing stormtrooper armor or some kind of, maybe biker scout armor, some kind of armor. I don't know. I, I'm not very happy uh, with the fact that we have spiders up here, uh, but, uh, you know, I haven't really seen too many that would need me to, or cause me to uh, wear any kind of armor like that. But Star Wars, and his fanaticism for Star Wars to the point where he was wearing a Stormtrooper uniform in public saved his life. That's bragging rights right there. What do you think, Wicket? Uh, next story I have here is... Oh, uh, iTunes. I don't know why this is really news, but it, it would have leapt past my radar and, unless I saw it. Well, duh. That doesn't make any sense. But it wasn't really covered. Uh, after 11 years, uh, iTunes, had a, they had a single of the week. It's no longer free. They're not doing it anymore. And uh, it's long overdue. You know, I think the world's kind of moved on. And honestly, a lot of the iTunes singles of the week that I had redeem codes for, I don't want, didn't want for free. And I just don't need it. So it makes sense that they've uh, kind of stopped, you know, releasing singles or, you know, negotiating uh, prices for singles of the week for free. Brian Lanning, by the way, I guess he celebrated a birthday and released his own iTunes single. I thought about doing something like that. It would suck. Uh, where I was singing to Baby Jedi. I don't think it would work well because I'm not a music arranger or anything like that. Be neat to do an 8-bit baby album, though. I'd like to do that. I just don't know any 8-bit composers like that at least offhand. Amazon is going to continue forward with Amazon Studios, only instead of just releasing to Amazon's platform, they are now going to start producing videos for the movie theater. They're going to start doing movies. Wow. Um, this, I think, is good news. I think Amazon has the potential to produce good movies, to be, to be a movie studio and a media studio. I think it's smart. It's a good endeavor. Obviously, they just won, won some Golden Globes uh, for uh, at least one of their shows, if not two. Uh, I haven't watched any Amazon series. I haven't had a, a lot of time to catch up with things. I mean, you have a baby, and that's kind of consuming your life. Uh, even dogs themselves, you can, you can take a lot of time. You know, you need your petting time, don't you, buddy? Well, you're joining me now. What happened to Diana? Diana? Yeah. What's wrong? Oh, she wanted to eat. Got it. Okay, well, she can eat. Uh, so anyway, Amazon is now going to be producing movies. Impressive. I want to see, uh, so many of those, uh, serialized content that, that, that Amazon and Netflix really, and even HBO, well, potentially HBO. I wish HBO would do that, uh, with content instead of just going season, uh, you know, episode at a time, I'd rather binge. 
I'd love that with Game of Thrones, but I don't think they're going to do that. <laughs> I would love to do that with Game of Thrones. Oh, that's how I experienced the first season of Game of Thrones. All right, I, I've been holding on to Wicket here, so I can't hold on to Jedi. You may have to, like, pop in. What's wrong, baby? Oh, nothing. Okay, I can... I got an idea. Hold on. Okay. Okay. Guess I gotta hold on. You, you, trust me, the payoff is good. You're gonna love this. You're gonna love what you see. Uh, there has been an update to Chrome on iOS. Uh, it's bringing material design and an improved uh, OS uh, 8, our iOS 8 support and iPhone 6 and 6 Plus support. It supports handoff between OS 10 or at least Yosemite or versions of OS 10 that support it outright. Oh, I'm can getting you, sanitized. Can you tell them a new mom? Wait, wait, wait. Sanitize your hands. <laughs> I've got to take a bath in hand sanitizer every five minutes with this baby. All right, baby. sweeties. Darth baby. Darth baby. Darth baby. Darth, 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 Baby, Darth, 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 Baby, Darth, Baby, Darth, Baby. Yeah, and she has Star Wars on her cape back here, oh. and she loves those tix clocks. She loves the glowing things just like her daddy. Yeah, yeah. Having fun here. You're gonna get used to this point of view, and she loves that Vader shelf up there. Yeah. I I I think black is her favorite color. Mm -hmm. I really do believe that. She likes the Tower of Orthanc, mm -hmm. the uh, Lego set that I built that's downstairs on the mantle. Oh, the Darth Vader signed. The Darth Vader signed a uh, uh, poster. Uh, uh, James Earl Jones and Dave Prowse. That was a gift from them, by Your the way. It's nice. My hoodie. She loves the black hoodie. Mm-hmm. All right, baby. You want to go back to mommy? She wants to go back to Darth Vader. I think so, too. There you go. There's everybody's surprise. There's your moment of cuteness. You're so fun. And she even has a hat, like a helmet hat thing. Hi. Oh, she's it's flying. tummy time. She's flying. But she's got a bow. We've got a flying Darth Vader girl here. She's flying. And don't let anybody tell you that you can't be who you want to be. That is faux show. Sure. What's so funny about Popcorn Day? Nothing. But uh, Popcorn Day was yesterday. Did you know that? No, but we I missed it. We ate popcorn. Yeah, Remember? yesterday. Last night. Oh, that's right. The sriracha popcorn. It was pretty nice. I like the sriracha popcorn. A little sweet, but sriracha kind of is in general. I didn't mind it. Not my favorite popcorn, but it was pretty decent. Better than uh, what was it? Burnt pickle fart. <laughs> Did that CPU go live for everybody? That CPU episode, it'll be in the Classic channel. We're stacking new CPUs that John's editing right now. They're going in the, the, the Classic channel. The uh, Patrons can see them right now. They will be released like all in one day, like 11 or 12 of them on Sunday. Because starting Monday, we start with the regular schedule of CPUs. But, you know, it's a, it's a big blowout. Like, boom! These are the CPUs. Boom! Like, all at once. That's gonna It's, it's really going to shock a lot of people in that channel. And I think you're going to watch a lot, want to watch a lot of the episodes. It's a smattering of things that uh, interest me, as, as I want CPU to be. Not just tech, but uh, things that I that I want to talk about. That, you know, and uh, it's Chris Perillo's universe. What else could it be? <sighs> I can only be the best me I can be for me. In case you were looking for a Bluetooth remote, a universal Bluetooth remote. Not that Bluetooth isn't universal, but a universal remote that works by way of Bluetooth. We've got one at 30 4% off. I almost said 30% off, but it's really 34%, which I think we can all agree is better than 30% off at deals.lockernome.com. Uh, we also have the one plus one giveaway. We got so many giveaways on deals.lockernome.com and the AGF Pro Game Creator Bundle at 83% off. Again, deals.lockernome.com. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start winding down here for today's TLDR simulcast onto YouTube and uh, SoundCloud with our podcast. Uh, I am going to do a very brief hangout with the patrons here in, in a bit, as I've been trying to do every weekday. And uh, I mean, there's some good stuff that happens. I answer more questions, interact with my team. You kind of get a little behind-the-scenes view. I you know, kind of talk off the cuff. Uh, you know, clean things up, get things ready. But then tonight, we're doing a family vlogger hangout in the new Perillo Vlogs channel. There are going to be, I guess, 
six families, including ours. That's a few families. <laughs> it's a lot of families. I don't know how well that's going to work, but it'll be a hangout and it'll be fun, or at least we intend on it being fun, and we hope you can join us there in the new Perillo Vlogs channel on YouTube. We'll be putting a link for everybody in the description uh, so that they can subscribe. <laughs> so that they can subscribe. The best way to do that is to head over to Twitter and follow the at Perilla Vlogs account. Just the, the, that's the name. The link is in the uh, the description uh, for that. Uh, I also have a, 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 I ask, uh, PerillaVlogs.com. We've got the, uh, uh, the page there uh, that uh, is going to have the Perilla Vlogs put there, at least the new ones. We may ask, I love you. I really do. I appreciate you. I truly do. But at this point, I'm going to leave you to your own devices.